What is the first question the police will ask you? Your answer could easily affect the entire course of their inquiries, but unfortunately you can't give it. And the question is... What is the exact time of death? Quite right, Mr. Riley. Never from pathological evidence alone can one give the exact time of death. All that we can hope to do is to estimate the time within eight hours. And for heaven's sake, don't let intuition or dogmatism about one particular theory or another ever tempt you to be more precise. Leave speculation to others. Do you prefer any one particular method, sir? Yes, body temperature. It's the least unreliable. But it says here, two of the most reliable techniques currently available involve estimating the levels of potassium and ascorbic acid in the spinal and eye fluids. You wrote that, sir. Did I? Good Lord. You're trying to trap me, aren't you? Yes, well, I, I did write that, but a long time ago. 1961. You have been doing a lot of research, haven't you, Mr. Miles? Look, methods change. Knowledge changes. Methods can be refined, or they can be rejected as inaccurate. Well, the description I gave of those tests in the journal you just quoted were inaccurate. But you relied upon them then. Until we learn better. But while you relied upon it them... It would be encouraging to know that our gods have feet of clay, that they can sometimes be wrong. Now, you mustn't be too severe, Mr. Miles. Sometimes through being wrong, we can <laughs> learn to be right. Now, I would never base a conclusion upon one such test alone. Never, sir. No. Of course, after all this time, it's hard to be sure, but no. <laughs> Everything we do has to be tested in court. Well, a clever counsel can try and put words into our mouths. I qualify my answer. I hope not. Wasn't there ever a case where your evidence, based on tests you now acknowledge as inaccurate, decided the final verdict? The the verdict? Oh, dear me, I couldn't possibly answer that one. I mean, going through whole transcripts of trials. Look, forensic evidence alone seldom determines the issue. Does that satisfy you? If you say so, sir. where your evidence, based on tests you now claim to be inaccurate, decided the final verdict? Ah! How did it go? Well, they were very bright, disturbingly so. Any calls? No calls. Question one of them asked, something right out of the blue. Hmm? He's only go back to 1970. Yes, on your instructions. Oh, yes, of course, I remember. Where are the others? How far back do you want to go? Early 60s. Upstairs, filed in the box room. Have you got a name? Yes, but the only thing I do remember, Turner. Yes, the name was Turner. Morning. Good morning. Mess, then. The Turner file. 1963? What's he doing with all this? I don't know. He asked for it last night. Probably forgot to sign the path report. <laughs> we just like him to want to put the record straight. Where is he? He's gone to see the policeman who handled the case. Has he? I think I'd like to read this. Professor Hardy. <laughs> well, this is a pleasant surprise. Please come in. Thank you. Maggie? Yes, who is it? Maggie, this is Professor Hardy. Remember, I told you about him often. My wife. <laughs> Professor! How do you do, Mrs. Bisley? Won't you sit down, Professor? Thank you. Well, this is a pleasure. How long has it been now? Seven years. Eight. Eight, I think. Oh, it's cause for a little drink, Maggie. Oh, yes, of course. Not that I'm out to pasture yet, though. Oh, no. Landed myself a job with a security firm. 
Frankly, it's easier than the police, and a damn sight better paid. There's old times I wanted to talk to you about. Oh? Murder case we were on together in the 60s. Will you try me, sir? Remember that memory of mine? There's one <laughs> thing that hasn't changed. I'll tell you, just walking through the town, I can still pick out the villains and put a name and a case history to them. Isn't that right, Maggie? <laughs> That's right. Well, this one was in 1963. Murder in 63. Let's see now. There were four. No, five. There was Harrison and Filton and Turner. It's the Turner Will... case I'm interested in. George Hubert Turner. Uh, no, thanks. Yeah, stabbing. Killed his mistress. Anything special about it? Special? Uh, your intuition. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My intuition and your facts. I told you, didn't I, Maggie? Did the case feel right? You mean, did he do it? Oh, yes. I never had any doubt. And you proved it. I remember that very well. The defence tried to get you to change your mind, but you were like a rock. You looked up your facts, made up your mind, and that was that. Yes. What is it, Professor? Memoirs? Not exactly. I've been expecting to see your memoirs on the bookstalls. But I wouldn't have thought the Turner case worth including. Very run of the mill. Yeah, I suppose Turner's out by now, started a new life. Oh, no, he's still inside, I think. A life sentence, seven to ten years. Depending upon behaviour. And Turner was a very bad boy those first few years. But slower than usual, Professor. Oh. Two attacks on prison warders. Had a bee in his bonnet about being innocent. Not that there was much chance of that. Uh, we had him bang to rights. Motive, opportunity, timing, everything. He was guilty, all right. Just couldn't accept it. He was lucky he wasn't hanged. Inspector, of course I trust your memory. I'd like to look at the file. Well, there'd be a transcript of the trial. Oh, yes, I could get that, but the police file would be more informative. Well, I've still got some good friends on the force, and as you worked on the case... I would appreciate it. Well, it'd be no problem. Case as long ago as that. What do you think? You're right. It's a very good pull. Giles, I know that as a barrister, your inclination is never to answer a direct question, but what do you think? Hmm. Hmm. Why are you so interested in this case? What was the key to the prosecution case? Time of death, wasn't it? Now you're leading me. Am I right? Basically, yes. The time of death was important. Well, certainly the prosecution thought so. They worried the issue to the point of labouring it. If you'd been prosecuting, would you have approached it differently? No. No, that's what I'd have gone for, too. So it was my evidence that convicted Turner? Ah, oh, no, no, not on its own. There was uh, his relationship with a dead woman. They were heard quarrelling the very day she was murdered. Yes, but remove the question of time. What sort of a case would the prosecution have had? Well... Enough to get a conviction. My word, that's good. John, I honestly don't know. But without the time factor, even if they'd got their conviction, as defence counsel, I think I'd have had a very good chance of reversing it on appeal. Because you're brilliant. Of course. <laughs> no, because the prosecution case rested on hearsay. I see. John, this isn't just an academic inquiry, is it? I don't know. What's going on, then? The Turner case. Oh, yes, I read it. Yes. Saturday, November the 23rd, 1963, a woman was found dead. She'd been stabbed. The attack took place here, in the hallway of the house. The body was found at 5.30 that afternoon by a neighbour with whom she'd arranged to have tea and who became curious. were called. Dead woman was Marie Elizabeth Weir, age 32. This was 13 years ago, Prop. Oh, yes. She was a widow, and she had a lover. George Turner. 
George Turner. On his own admission, he'd quarrelled with her the day before. And then the day after, he went round to see her again to try and patch things up, yeah? Yes, he arrived at the house shortly after eight o'clock. But instead of patching things up, they quarrelled again. And the neighbours heard them quarrelling round about 8.15. Then he was seen to leave the house at 8.25. And Murray Weir was never seen alive again. So Turner was tried and convicted and did time for him. Yes. And he's still doing it. Now, he insisted that she was alive when he left the house. He caught a train at 8.46 to Portsmouth. So from 8.46 onwards, his alibi was secure. Yes, well, wait a minute. She was alive at 8.15 because the people next door heard her. Yes, and uh, I had estimated that the time of death was no later than 8.30. And he was seen leaving at 8.25. So it was almost certain that he was present at the time of her death. Well, then it was open and shut, wasn't it? It was. Well, the problem is simply that until the 1950s, the generally accepted estimate of time of death on the first day was within eight hours. Well, round about then, some of us became convinced that two newly discovered tests were correct. And these had the effect of reducing the period of eight hours to a period of two hours. Well, I did both tests. Potassium, the ascorbic acid in the spinal fluid and I, and both gave the time for death as between 6.30 and 8.30. Those tests are now considered inaccurate. Yes. They might be considered in inaccurate, but she could still have died before 8.30. Oh, she certainly could have done so. But these tests should never have been brought forward in evidence. That is the point. You mean modern research hasn't narrowed down the time of death at all? <laughs> no, it's widened it. It is established that it is quite impossible to be as precise as two hours. In theory, she could have died at any time between 3.30 and 11.30 a.m. But, of course, we know that she was alive at 8.15 because the neighbours heard her quarrelling. So, she could have died between 8.15 and 11.30. And at 8.25, he was seen leaving the house. So if she was alive when he left and he went straight to the station, he can't have killed her? No, no, no. It is now possible that someone else might have during those three hours between 8.30 and 11.30. Well, he was seen getting on a train at 8.46. If he left the house at 8.25, then he had 21 minutes to get to the station. How far is the station? Do you know, I'm, I'm not sure. This place is the last step, so to speak. From here, they push him into the bright world outside. Some of them are in for a shock. This may be a prison. It can be a darn sight easier than the outside world. Johnson, get George Turner, interview room. Right.
This way, sir. We look after you over here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Yes, can I help you? Uh, yeah, that uh, man you with, uh, then, my right, is that Dr. John Hardy? His name's Hardy, yes. The pathologist. Search me. He's here to see a prisoner. That's all I know. Who are you? Oh, an old friend. I haven't seen him for years. Uh, would it be long? As long as he needs. With George Turner. You better check at reception. I won't bother. I'll see him later at his house. Thank you, officer. Mr. Turner. Sir. Uh, my name is Hardy. Uh, Professor John Hardy. We haven't actually met, but um, we have seen one another. I'm sorry, sir. It was a long time ago, at your trial. Hardy. Why, yes, sir, I do remember you. You were very impressive, sir. Was I? Well, uh, do sit down. Oh, but please, do, do sit down. Well, I understand you're going to be released soon. Yes, sir. E end of the month. I've uh, learned my lesson, sir. Prison has, uh, has uh, rehabilitated me. I won't be back, sir. Rehabilitated? So you were guilty? I've given up thinking about guilt and innocence, sir. It got me into a lot of trouble. I would have been out two or three years ago if I hadn't, um, hadn't. I've learned my lesson, sir. I won't be back. There's not any trouble, is there, sir? Trouble? Uh, about my release. I, I know it was a bit of a problem at first, but that was years ago. I, I've settled down now. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't. They said, um, if I behave myself, um, end of the month. Definitely. No, no trouble, Turner. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. Look, you will be released at the end of the month, but for, for my peace of mind, did you kill Mary Weir? Kill her? Yes. But, but I told you, sir, I, I gave all that up years ago. I've learnt my lesson. But did you kill Mary Weir? Mari. I loved her. I really loved her. Look, who else could have wanted to kill her? I'm sorry, sir. Sorry. Uh, I've learnt my lesson. I really have. Turner, on that morning, you caught the 846 train for Portsmouth. Did you go all the way? Did you see him? Yes. Yes. Oh, um, an Inspector Wisley left this for you. I was expecting that. And you have a visitor. Who? A Mr. Paxton. He said you'd want to see him in connection with the Turner affair. Paxton? I know nobody called Paxton. Well, they, they said it was about Turner. Look, come in with me, would you? Baxton. Professor Hardy. Uh, my secretary tells me that you want to see me about George Turner. That's right. I was at Mossville this morning. I saw you and heard you were talking to Turner. You saw me? Of course, I recognise you straight away. I've seen you often enough in court. Who are you? Paxton, crime correspondent of the Globe. I have nothing to say to you. As soon as I saw you out there this morning, I looked up our file on George Turner. You concern yourself with aftercare for all your old boys. I repeat, I have nothing to say to you. So, you leave me with two possible stories. The aftercare angle for the social column. Nice little paragraph. A uh, famous pathologist shows he cares. Or could it be what went wrong at the trial of George Turner? You object to me looking into a possible miscarriage of justice. There has been no miscarriage of justice. Can I quote you on that? Professor Hardy says there's no miscarriage of justice in the case of George Turner. 
Your seeing me this morning was a most unfortunate coincidence. I have a column to write, Professor. I'd rather be in at the start of a story than at the end. Mr. Paxton, if I were to agree to tell you why I went there, would you hold back until I am in a position to give you the facts? You could try me. Left about ten minutes ago. Did he see the globe, do you know? I shouldn't think so. He doesn't take it, does he? Well, I've had a quick glance through. I can't see anything. Well, that's that then, isn't it? You might show a little more interest. What are you doing? Cutting sections of the microscope, the coronary case. There we are. Looks good to me. Let's have a look. What is it? It's a new staining technique for the demonstration of coronary disease. Like the prof's opinion when he gets around to doing some work again. <laughs> you have a look. See if you can find anything. Well, it's not the sort of story to be hidden away. Extraordinary. Do you see anything? No, nope. not a word. Bet Paxton won't wait forever. Well, he's agreed. Yes, but for how long? What do you mean? Think about it for a minute. Has this story of a man who served 13 years for murder, and now the great Professor Hardy has doubts about his own evidence, the story's dynamite. Well, there's nothing in the paper. Paxton's obviously agreed to wait. Wait? A reporter? It's against nature. You're a cynic, Price. I'm a realist. Susan? Hello, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Please, uh, pass through here. Right. It's Mr. Marsden, Professor. My dear Giles, how good of you to come. Your call disturbed me. I've just been looking through the police file. I want counsel's opinion. Well, I'm relieved to hear it. I thought you were going to play all the parts yourself. What? Well, first you're the judge dismissing your own evidence. Now you're the police finding the real murderer. Presumably, you'll also be the jury and announce the verdict. Simply want to ascertain the facts. You ask for counsel's opinion. Well, here it is. Leave it. Just leave it. Turner has served his sentence and he's about to be released. But he may be innocent. Well, I would dispute that. But what if he were to be found innocent? You can't give him back 13 years out of his life. And it isn't just Turner. What about all the other men behind bars because of forensic evidence? You'd create a, a monster of resentment against you, the police, the courts, the whole system. Yes, but if he were, he would be found officially innocent. There'd be some sort of compensation. I don't know what sums they pay, but... Well, they don't pay the value of 13 years out of a man's life. Have you thought of the damage you could do to yourself? It's no concern of mine. Well, that attitude is utterly selfish. Your opinion of the time of Mari Weir's death was given in good faith using the best techniques available at the time. It was. Well, there you are, then. Science may have been wrong. May have been wrong. Not you. Don't let's hide behind concepts. Tom, you are one of the best forensic pathologists in the country. Are you going to announce to the world that you and the science that you represent are not to be trusted? I am talking about justice. And then you're talking about it. Thirteen years too late. Leave it, John. For your sake, for Turner's sake. Leave it. Please. How does one get a retrial? You get in touch with Turner Solicitors. They apply for a retrial before a judge in chambers. But unless you can produce cast iron evidence that Turner could not possibly have murdered Mari Weir, or better, prove that somebody else did, then their advice will be the same as mine. I can give them reasonable doubt. That's not enough, John. Hello. Ah, Mr. Paxton. Ah, uh, come in. 
I'll tell the professor you're here. Do go through. Thank you. Thank you for your restraint. I'm most grateful. Have a drink. Uh, thanks. It's small scott. I'm afraid I haven't got anything for you as yet. Well, that's what I've come about. Yes, but I, I have nothing to tell you. It's not that, Professor. I'm not my own master. My editor won't wear it. Won't? I had to tell him, but he won't wait. A story of deep public concern. I've got to do a piece on it or someone else will. And it's an exclusive, you know what that means. Well, it's everything to do with circulation. Nothing to do with what people may suffer in the process. I did my best, I'm sorry. That's why I came to tell you. I could have telephoned. I see. Well, thank you. But we can still help each other. Oh, no. Now, you tell your editor from me, although I doubt you will understand what I'm talking about, that this is a matter of private concern and not to be shared with the public. You tell him that from me. I'll try it. Where is everybody? Professor? Susan? I'm up here, filing. Well, leave it. Come on down. Have you seen the paper? No. Our friend Paxton's blown the whole thing. Where's the prof? He's gone to see Inspector Wisley. Oh, my. Great, isn't it? Well, he asked for it, and now he's got it. Man's an idiot. Oh, Professor Hardy. Thank you for getting these for me. They're most helpful. But there are a few questions I'd like to ask you about them. Would you mind? Come in. Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Wesley. It's uh, about the brother, Leslie Stevens. He is mentioned only occasionally in the file. You do remember, don't you? Yes, I remember. Well, what I'd like is to go through with you everything that might have happened between 8.30 and 11.30 that morning. Why do you let him ask you all these questions? Why don't you ask him a few? Go on, you've taken it out on me enough this morning. You didn't have any trouble shouting at me. But Mrs. Wisley, You've I... got a damn cheek. That's what you've got. Maggie. That's what you said, wasn't it? A damn cheek. But I don't understand. You but don't you... understand. We can read the papers, you know. Maggie. You come here all friendly, making up stories about your memoirs. No, I did not. Your husband assumed You're talking that. Talking about old times, and all you really wanted was to make my husband out a fool. Maggie, that's enough. I'm sorry, but what she says is true. I trusted you, Professor. You and let's think face it, I, I wouldn't have gone to all the tr trouble to have got this file for you if I'd known, if I'd imagined. I work for a security firm now. I may not be managing director, but I'm important. My name's on the letter heading, Ted Wisley, ex-detective inspector. It's a good job, it's well paid. There were more than 20 applicants for it, I'll tell you, but I got it. I got it because of my experience and my past record. And now you're trying to muddy up that record for it. Maggie, but now this Turner thing's exploded, there's going to be doubts as to my ability. I assure you I have said nothing to the press. This is the work of a reporter. Well, he's not been fair to me. Well, I may not have been fair to Turner. Turner was guilty. On evidence that is unreliable. I may be the one to blame. Look, I'll explain it all to the Globe. Anyone can make a mistake. Anyone except a copper. They've got to be seen to be right, or, or where are we? Inspector, you know that every man in prison is not necessarily guilty. What I think doesn't matter. It's what other people think. He's been in prison for 13 years. Well, what's it matter now? He'll be out in a few weeks. What does it matter now? You're just stirring things up for the sake of it. Do you believe that? No, Professor, I don't. I'm sure you meant well. But I'm in the middle. I see. No, thank you. What about the brother? Ted. He doesn't have to quote me, do you? Well, of course not. Marie Weir's brother could have had a motive, but no opportunity. You questioned him? Of course. And? 
At that time, he was working at the American consulate. His sort of handyman attended the boilers, did a bit of gardening. Did he live in? No. He reported every morning at 8.30 and worked through to 5. But that morning, did he report for work? He did. But after 8.30? Well, there was no need to check that. You were so certain that she was dead by 8.30, Professor. Yes, I, I was. Well, thank you, Inspector. I'm really sorry, Mrs. Whistley. I, I, I'll put it right. I'll have to see the brother. It's not really your job, is it, sir? You haven't eaten anything today. Thank you. You join me. Oh. Cheers. You should marry again, Susan. Will you marry again? She gave me balance, and that's what I have lost. Balance. But marry again? No, certainly not. Yeah. I'm lost, Susan. Just floundering. It's something that I can follow to a logical conclusion, but conjecture. Leslie Stevens. Your guesswork. Leslie Stevens? Yes, Mary Weir's brother. Well, where does he fit into all this? I wish I knew. It's like trying to fit a round peg into a square hole. You see, when she was widowed, she lived with her mother. And when the mother died, she inherited the house. And of course, she was murdered in the house. But the brother got nothing under his mother's will. So as he was his sister's next of kin, he inherited the house and the contents. Yes, but that house, I mean, that little street, all those years ago, it can't have been worth very much. People have been murdered for the small change in their pockets. Murders, something is not always committed by criminals. A house is as good a motive as the one they attributed to Turner. Passion. Is the brother still living there? Yes. Well, then. Yes? Mr. Stevens. I'm looking for a Mr. Stevens. I've seen you before. I'm Professor Hardy. Hardy? I... You're the one trying to say he didn't do it. I would like to ask you a few questions. I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to talk to anybody. Mr. Stevens. Nobody at all. like being followed. Not guilty, Professor. I have access to files, too. And I came up with the same idea as you. And what is that? The brother. Turner didn't do it. The brother pops up as second choice. How do you get that idea? Oh, come on. If you're going to be murdered, 99 times out of 100, who's going to do it? A close friend. A husband. A relative. Which brought me to the brother. But he has an alibi, doesn't he? 
He was at work, yes. But an American vice consul was General Handyman. Now, the police went to the house and checked that he did arrive for work on the day. And that he left at the right time. Yes. Do you know where the house is? No. I'll save you the trouble. It's no more than 40 minutes' walk from here. Really? His employer was positive that he arrived for work at 8.30. Yes, but after 8.30. Look, have you spoken to the vice consul? He died in 73. So, where do we go from here? We? Well, I told you my bit. What about you? You got anything new? No. No. If I were you, I'd try Turner again. This time with the brother. <laughs> Turner, do sit down. I'd rather stand. As you wish. Well, I suppose you've heard. I've heard. I'm a man who's always rejected intuition. But the more I read of your case, the more I feel that you were wrongly convicted. Now, look, I don't want to raise false hopes. But I just feel that we might be able to prove that you did not kill Marie Weir if you and I could go through everything that happened on that day. Leave me alone. I've learnt my lesson. I don't want any trouble, not now, not ever. There won't be any trouble, I promise you. Just leave me alone. Mr Turner, I want to help you. Help me? How? I've served 13 years. 13. Do you know how many days that is? 4,749 leap years in all. I know. I've counted them. But Mr. Turner. Raise false hopes. About what? But I'll get out on Wednesday instead of Friday. 13 years. That's a long time. A long, long time. Is there any possibility? That Mary Weir's brother. You think I haven't thought of that all the time? Well, then. All right. So you prove it's him. Where's the profit in that for me? Giving me back my 13 years, does it? Then he takes my place. Day in, day out. Staring at the wall of his cell. Counting. Not the days, but the minutes, the seconds. Count him so your head's so full of numbers it feels like bursting. You think I've wished that on him? Yes. Even him. You think I've wished that on anybody? You've done enough damage. Damage? Thirteen years ours. I deserved at least a clean start, didn't I? Deserved to be able to come out unknown. Able to bury myself somewhere I'm not known. My fingers won't be pointed. And you've changed all that. The picture in the papers. Old wounds opened up. Ah, there'll be fingers now, and plenty of them. And doors slammed in my face. You couldn't have timed it better. Mr. Turner, I never thought... Your kind never do. Mr. Vernon! I don't have to talk to him, do I? I know you owe me body and soul, but I don't have to talk to him, do I? Thought you'd gone home. Yep. I'm worried about him, you know. Why? Well, I've never seen him like this. He's obsessed by this darn Turner case. Don't say that again. 
Hasn't even looked at the slides I prepared. They've got enough work to do without worrying what happened 13 years ago. It's a waste of time. Oh, it's more than that. It's a principle. Is it? Once you go raking about in the past, you stir up a good deal of mud in the end, not find what you're looking for. Yeah, well, you know his passion for what he calls objective truth. You just have to get it out of his system, I'm afraid. I hope for all our sakes that won't be long. Self-indulgence. Turns out that his evidence was wrong. Do you think it'll do him much harm? Well, I don't suppose it'll do him much good. Anyway, his evidence wasn't wrong. It was spot on, according to scientific knowledge at the time. Okay, so things change. His evidence will be different today. But surely you can see it's a matter of conscience. Oh, polish a halo. Don't you patronise me. Look, Turner's done his time. Nobody can give him those years back again. Why not let sleeping dogs lie? Because the professor thinks that truth is important, I suppose. All right. So leave it at that. He's in there drinking, you know. He's near as damn it drunk. A man who never gets drunk just once in a while isn't worth knowing. Put it down as necessary therapy. It's nice to know he's drunk. Nice to know? Yes. Nice to know we're not working for a computer. We're working for a man. And men get drunk. home, Susan. What? Um, well, I've got a few more things to do, actually. You're lying. <clears throat> lying very charmingly, but you're lying. It's time you went home. Yes. But a terrible error, Susan. No. Oh, yes, always. Let's put facts before human considerations. You were trying to right a wrong. To admit to a possible mistake. That can't be wrong. Oh, in principle, no, but in practice. Just been indulging myself in hurting people. The important thing is that you cared. Anyway, to have shown Turner innocent, you would have proved yourself guilty of error. You're a good girl, Susan. You'll marry again. Probably in systolic. Well, I, I mustn't interfere with your life, must I? I'm not good at that. In fact, I'm patently bad at it. Excuse me. What do you want, Press? I've been staring at this photo of Marie Weir for the past hour. And? Well, you see that newspaper headline, Kennedy assassinated? Well, what about it? Well, Marie Weir was murdered on Saturday the 23rd of November. And the day before, Friday, Kennedy was assassinated. Leslie Stevens, the brother, was working for the American vice consul as a sort of handyman, you know, tending the boiler, that's yes. all. Yes. And the day after the assassination, it would have been absolute chaos there. Exactly. And the boiler man wouldn't have been seen, what, noticed all the time. It was confirmed that he reported to work at 8.30. And as the original time of death was no later than 8.30, he was in the clear. But now we know it could have been any time up to 11.30. Yes, you're right. He could easily have gone missing for an hour or so. Oh, with the rumpus going on in the consulate that day, of course. He could have slipped away, murdered Marie Weir, and straight back again. Of course, it would have been possible. Better than that, it's probable. No, possible. What does it matter? It's been pointed out to me very clearly. What does it matter? It matters because you're right doing all this. I think you're right. I've been right since you started this thing. Right in every respect. It's just my opinion. Thank you, Price. Well, what do you do now? About a possibility. Nothing. Mind you, there is one thing I could do. What? One last piece of indulgence. You'd better drive me, Price. Yeah. 
Yes, it's me again. That professor chap. I told you before. Turner is going to be released on Wednesday. He's going to need a job. I might employ him myself. He... he done what he did. And, uh, and he deserved everything... Do we all. know that, Mr. Stevens? Do you read the Globe? Nobody believes anything. They and all say. the other papers have taken it up today. Then they'd better not print anything about me. I know my rights. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Stevens. I think the press are going to win a new investigation and a new trial. And if they do, I will be in court. And I will give evidence that might... that will clear George Turner. <laughs> 